दिस इज भारत एफ एम बजेगा भारत झूमेगा भारत ये है भारत एफएम बजेगा भारत झूमेगा भारत नमस्कार सत्याकाल वेलकम एंड आदाब यू आर लिसनिंग टू भारत एफएम और वन ऑफ इट्स काइंड मल्टीलिंगुअल इक्लेक्टिक प्रोवाइडर ऑफ एंटरटेनमेंट इंफॉर्मेशन एंड न्यूज टू इंडियन अमेरिकन्स Headquartered in Cincinnati, Ohio, Bharat FM airs shows out of Cincinnati, Chicago, and Phoenix. We take pleasure in our ability to cater to your bhakti, chusti, sphurti, shakti, and masti needs with our audio and visual shows. Check out bharatfm.com for our online program schedule and archives. I'm sure the content will definitely tickle your senses. Tune in via the 24-hour web streaming on bharatfm.com. or via the Bharat FM app more information can be procured at 5134885070 hi everybody welcome to storytellers cafe namaskar good evening vanakkam and good morning and a good day to all the viewers and listeners from across the world especially chennai mumbai india cincinnati chicago and phoenix united states welcome to this wonderful edition of storytellers cafe we just had yesterday was mahatma's birthday bapu's birthday mahatma gandhi's birth anniversary and storytellers cafe celebrated it with a wonderful storyteller who is our guest tonight Vikram Shridhar from Chennai. Vikram moonlights between Chennai and Bangalore. Presently, he is based out of Chennai, and Vikram shared with us a beautiful story about in and around Mahatma. If you have not seen it, it's there in our archives on the Facebook of Bharat FM as well as on YouTube, and you just have to click Storytellers Cafe. Uh, Gandhi Jayanti special with Vikram Shridhar, and you can watch it. And I will certainly share that link on the chat today. Do take a look at in and around the Mahatma. It was a storytelling performance, beautiful journey of Bapu Ji, and it was around his favorite song, Vaishnava Janato. So it was Vikram's uh, production, whole and soul, and I was. mesmerized he keeps saying that he has a desi style of telling stories but the amount of research that vikram had done on this production we're going to talk a little bit about it and also engage in conversation with vikram shridhar but before that let me get vikram shridhar on to the screen and friends it's a relaxed sunday i'm in my kaftan and not in my customary dressing up and here is a cup of herbal chai with me i've decided to do a 3 day detox go on to raw food on the occasion of gandhi jayanti to lead a simple life and this is also the joy of giving to give out storytellers cafes main aim mission is to give is to give stories to give some kind of refuge during this these troubled times to help you navigate your life by listening to the stories by the wonderful storytellers who grace our studios every week week after week and i will mention a special name hema subramanian my dearest friend and colleague storyteller wonderful storyteller who has edited vikram's production you know the video that you saw yesterday in and around the mahatma and beautifully packaged it and stitched it together so thank you hema subramanian for that wonderful job and now friends let me bring vikram shridhar without further ado hi vikram hi usha 
வணக்கம் நமஸ்காரம் ஹாய் ஹலோ வெல்கம் டு ஸ்டோரி டெலர்ஸ் கேஃபே அண்ட் ஐ வில் கிவ் அ ப்ரீஃப் இன்ட்ரடக்ஷன் விக்ரம் இஸ் அகெயின் ஒன் ஆஃப் தோஸ் பீப்புள் த அன்சங் ஹீரோஸ் ஹூ டோன்ட் வாண்ட் டு டாக் அபவுட் த லெட்டர்ஸ் யூ நோ தட் ரன் பிஹைண்ட் யோர் நேம் and it's something very novel for us uh, people who come from southern india we love we love to showcase the letters behind our names well uh, vikram is a performance storyteller and theater practitioner he loves to sit in the temple he says sitting behind temple elephants so i guess he rides the elephants nursing wounded puppies i love that working with various theater groups vikram shridhar is a performance storyteller and theater practitioner combining his various interests and work for over 20 plus years in theater conservation and social work he has extensively traveled the country performing facilitating workshops and speaking at schools corporates business conferences literary and cultural festivals for children and adults he believes in the desi way of storytelling why not i think today i can very proudly say vikram that's a wonderful way and to proudly own it and vikram strongly believes a story a day keeps the doctor away not an apple i couldn't agree more you can follow vikram on his social handles and this is already in the post instagram handle he is he goes by the storytelling fellow maybe the underscore and on linkedin he is vikram shridhar 1 and please note it's vikram shridhar s r i not s h and on facebook the storytelling fellow so vikram now the stage is yours i've done enough talking so cheers and welcome to this joy of giving week or giving month i would say throughout the year on this special occasion of bapu's birthday thanks usha thanks to bharat uh, fm and thanks to storytellers cafe for creating space for storytelling i think um, something that i strongly believe is spaces are so ingrained in our life because people come and go but spaces remain and uh, such wonderful work that usha is doing through storytellers cafe and um, to each one of you watching each one of you who are traveling this journey more power to each one of you so thank you for having me um, for this special episode you're most welcome vikram you know i have an unending i mean you're all senior storytellers but sometimes you know when the occasion comes and i knew that i had to have you during um, bapu's birthday because of the work that you had done on mahatma uh, vikram uh, i would like to jump straight in and if you can throw a light or some interesting anecdote about this journey i know you don't want it to be told you're an engineer how did you become a storyteller um so like every uh south indian family my parents uh, did want two children but what they dreamt was they wanted one child to be a sports person and one child to be an artist they wanted a, the boy to be a sports person girl to be an artist and both became boys and they both gave us equal opportunities and as growing up um like many of us i i'm a, i was a very normal child i mean i i um did well in studies i studied in one of a premier institutes in chennai and um while enjoying the pleasure of being normal i also like to do couple of things and uh, i lo- i love this phrase somebody told me once always love what you do and uh, you need not be good at it if you like to do something keep doing it you'll get better tomorrow so couple of things that i always three things which i love one was arts cultural arts performing arts and uh, the school i studied is padma shishadri so i always have grown up watching performances being a part of cultural uh, shows and art somewhere was surrounding me and i don't come from an arts family um, none of my pa- my family members are artists so that way art was something which was outside my horizon the second interest was uh, like uh, like usha mentioned uh, animals puppies wildlife nature 
and uh, so a lot of times even in school i remember uh, sitting in uh, after the school got over with the dog of the school and talking to it and uh, sometimes taking care of its puppies or just feeding whatever was left over in the lunch box and that was the second interest and the third interest was um, and is working with uh, children from different um, facilities capacities different abilities and uh, making sure that they laugh um, i love watching children laugh because i believe children without child without laughter is adult with, with a lot of uh, uh, baggage that we carry so these three were always there with me and as i uh, moved from school and college i continued doing this so in college also i used to go every weekend uh, to blue cross in chennai and volunteer and then i used to work um, with spastic society which is uh, uh, in chennai and also of course uh, just watch performances and shows but i never thought art would enter my life in its way so fast forward so my caterpillar time was in chennai my butterfly time was in bangalore so as i moved into bangalore um life took a different turn because i had to start working because i had completed my uh, undergrad post grad and, and got a campus placement and was working but i had the rest of the day with me so i used to get up at 4 o'clock go and work uh, with organizations working in urban wildlife and uh, then go and work with theater groups in production in marketing there were times i used to carry hoardings of posters and uh, go on a two wheeler and a bus and go put it up in um, places for advertisements and uh, also at the same time used to work with um, different uh, social organizations and like usha uh, mentioned the joy of giving week so the first time the joy of giving week was formed i was one of the founding members uh, we planned it in bangalore so bangalore was where the word joy of giving week which later became dan utsav became that word was coined in bangalore and was there in the table along with the others when the word was discussed and uh, so that was happening and one time um, somebody and for me i was trying to find my artistic connect uh, in theater because uh, you can do productions you can do marketing but what is the the question is what art are you doing that question was always uh, because for me writing was not my forte uh, directing was something which was not for me comfortable acting yes but this by hearting lines was something which was like no i mean that's one of the reasons why i didn't score well in social studies in school but i scored a little well in max and science where i could frame my own sentences mm -hmm. and um, that's when i got an opportunity to uh, for for a group of children uh, uh, somebody said can you come and just um, um animal related stuff i said of course yes because uh, uh, this was uh, see uh, i want the children are, not, are feeling very bored to just look at the presentation so i said let me let me just do a story um and instead of reading i performed it i mean i started performing it and i could see that these wordless narratives started flowing and um, i started dancing on stage i mean and then the the faculty and the uh, volunteers said sir we also enjoyed it i said but uh, this is the story is not even there in any book i mean i just made up the story and they said it's okay so that's when i realized that uh, this form of um, in what in theater we could call improv we could call clowning and then bringing in the conservation that i've always loved doing because the common people um, the public are very distant from the scientific world of conservation the common sometimes even public don't know the difference between a cheetah and a leopard or an african elephant and a nation elephant and uh, and certain things like mongoose and the snake i mean which has been stereotyped a lot because of the stories and that stereotype leads to a lot of stereotypes and biases as we grow grow, grow older so that form to bring in conservation and taking it to social spaces to children to adults under a tree and of course that drama that i could create without a text for me was fascinating and when that happened uh i would say that was that's why i say bangalore's where i became a butterfly the blooming of uh, uh, a new form of performance storytelling for me happened and that's after that i performed and then i went and watched a lot of senior people and i wanted to perform as much as to children to adults as much as in auditoriums in stages and under a tree so in that way space for me was saying that why is space a constraint why should only perform in that stage and that is something that fluidity is something i loved and uh, and also saying i mean i want to i want to tell stories one day in a city one day in a village one day in a 
different space. That space is, and India is a land of space. So that's when the story, performance storyteller was born. And uh, from there, I, I've only lived a single journey because storytelling for me today is everything. Um, I think your audio is. Uh, I said, what a journey, Vikram. And there is so much more to you. And I think I know something and I would like to share. And if you could just answer them, you know, briefly so that we could cover more of you. Vikram, I know that um, I've seen you uh, many years back as a storyteller at many literature festivals uh, or storytelling festivals. Uh, I mean, eight years back, there was only literature festivals, children's literature festival. It's only in the last couple of years that we have storytelling festival. I would say one of the first foremost storytelling festival was Kathakar in Delhi. So I remember being invited. It's purely a storytelling uh, festival. It happened in the Stein Auditorium where I stepped in for uh, Laura Sims, actually, who is a dear friend. She couldn't take the flight and she landed in Mumbai a couple of days later. So I had the privilege of performing with the French storyteller Muriel Block. So and then, uh, then other uh, storytelling festivals came. You know, Jeeva Raghunath, who's graced our studios before, started under the Alai Maram. I think uh, one of the first um, uh, storytelling festivals that India has uh, been witness to. Um, you have curated literature festivals. I would like you to talk about it. And also, I know that you worked on Panchatantra. Uh, because when we have crossed paths or when we've met at uh, literature festivals or storytelling festivals, and I've been intrigued by this. And um, I know that you wake up in the morning, you go to Kaban Park or Lal Bagh, and you've been with Shilpa Mudbi, that uh, she's also been in our studios, and um, wonderful way of where she would do this music and practice. So, um, Vikram, I see that you are a very passionate you know, I see that fire in you. I don't have it. Maybe because I'm 60 years old today, I don't have that. My uh, passions are different right now, you know. But I see that and I admire because I know this will take you a long way. And there is sincerity. I believe in sincerity. And if you're really sincere, there will be definitely fruits of labor. Because I'm also a very sincere person. So when you sincerely work hard for something, definitely it will bear fruit. And I see that in you. And that's one thing I really admire. I also remember uh, Amin Haq uh, speaking highly of you uh, when he came or once when he was in conversation with me, that I think all of you started at the same time, or maybe you were senior to Amin. Uh, but you know, the life with its twists and turns, not everybody uh, reaches the pinnacle maybe in the beginning, but then people reach it slow and steady. It took me 24 long years to be where I am today. So uh, Vikram, tell us about uh, this interest in Panchatantra and your curating Lit Fest. I'm sure our audience would love to uh, hear about this. So I'll take, I'll talk about the Panchatantra and, uh, first. So uh, a text that all of us know um, definitely from the time we are born, from the time uh, we are born, the stories we've been told is this is from the ancient text called Panchatantra. And um, after the Mahabharata and Ramayana and uh, the other Vedic texts, one of the texts that's traveled the world uh, from India and one of the texts, which is the first text in Arabic studies, Kalila Vadhinna, uh, is the Panchatantra. And uh, the beauty of the Panchatantra is each story, there are about 80 plus stories and they've been translated from by Westerners, by uh, Sanskrit scholars. Each text, if you look at each of the stories, no two stories have the same animals. And my journey into the Panchatantra is purely from the world, what we define as ethology or interspecies communication. Uh, because as, in, as a Sanskrit text, there are fantastic scholars who have done a great work. I mean, today you can even see them online. But my interest in just looking at them from ecology uh, perspective, um, and that for me was fascinating because it also talks about different human qualities. And the five chapters of the Panchatantra uh, 
ಮಿತ್ರ ಭೇದ ಮಿತ್ರ ಲಾಭ ಕಾಕೋ ಲುಕ್ಯಂ ಅಪರಕ್ಷಿತ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮ ಆಲ್ ದೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ what we can look at psychology philosophy because the first chapter of the panchatantra is talks about mitra bheda and translated says removing of friends in a very loose translation and i expanded to say that removal is not a friends could be our emotions our friends could be uh, even a gadgets around us and just not physical people and to and they say to understand one panchatantra story you need to read the previous story and the next story which means that to re- understand even a little bit of one story i need to understand about 80 plus stories can you do this in one lifetime so it's been th- on that journey and each of these animals are so beautifully understood from nature because uh, vishnu sharma who the text has been credited um the species that comes in there are birds like lapwing there is uh, of course the most one of the popular stories we know is the mongoose and the snake but what from a conservation world we uh can connect it is to say that mongoose is the one of the few species which has anti venom and that is why you will see the cobra and the mongoose always pitted against each other and always cobra is what will come in lot of stories because it it can also be visually represented than the sand boa or the rattlesnake and uh each of the story has it open and are they only text of animals no there are there are stories which talks about um husband and wife their story which talks about lovers and these don't come in um, what we look at panchatantra so my journey has been one to look at these as an exploratory into human and animal world and then second is am i an elephant today maybe tomorrow i could be a tiger maybe day after i can become a rat what i do with it is important and that's for me looking at it emotionally spiritually it's a very spiritual text in a certain way also and that's been my journey and um, during the pandemic i did devise a workshop to, because uh, the other world is also folk tale and panchatantra is also can be looked as a folk tale and how in today's time is a folklore and um, how the panchatantra uh, also has issues i mean like any other uh, text there are issues and the beauty of these text is we take it from the past and we have to add today's uh, masala and uh, the secret essence and carry to the next generation and that's the beauty of uh, each of the texts in india we have a responsibility to hand it over to the next generation and like many um, singers and many artists have said all the texts that's come to us has changed over time have been contemporized have had its own flavor of uh, musicians dancers storytellers adding to it and we have received it and my my journey with the panchatantra is can i open some of them and uh, bring it back to adults world why is it only for children because the more we, i look at it it has one story has everything in it and then hand it to the next generation yes there are issues and uh, the issue can be addressed if we take it from the book which is a dead body and humanize it and that's all i'm trying to do with the panchatantra from there to go into the literature festivals so the one literature festival that i've been um, involved is the bangalore literature festival and i curate um, the children's part of the bangalore literature festival and uh, a lot of times like how um, usha mentioned uh, the word literature uh, is only viewed as uh, books uh, only and for me the joy was saying that isn't singing literature isn't dancing literature isn't sketching literature isn't um, uh a lullaby a literature and that's what i loved in curating uh, this uh, the literature festival i did i been doing it in other cities um and when i curate these literature festival for children especially i want because as a child i'm sure each child loves many things but isn't everything literature in india so there is oral there is visual there is sensorial so that for me was joy and uh, when i when i started curating and thanks to the team of bangalore literature festival um uh, they gave me a chance to explore the huge spectrum so we've had sessions where um, a violinist just comes and plays for the children and then there is someone who comes and sings kabir for a uh, set of children then there's somebody coming and talking about uh, uh, tortoises and uh, frogs to children and all this for me because if you can give literature in a large essence for 
children and that to your children sitting together under a tree and experiencing this was magic when it happened and there are wonderful festivals happening across the country and this is my small way to contribute to um, the children of today because the children of today uh, need to laugh and celebrate than ever before Thank you, Vikram. You've beautifully explained uh, both my questions. And I want to uh, ask you, and that was supposed to be spoken in the beginning, but nevertheless, uh, one is, I know you're one of the founder members of Bangalore Storytelling Society. And I think I've mentioned many times on Storytellers Cafe, kind of my muse or my inspiration to set up Mumbai Storytellers Society. Uh, which was set up two years back because I've seen them working so diligently and so passionately towards uh, promoting the oral tradition in the community. Uh, if you would like to say a few words about uh, BSS, Bangalore Storytelling Society, and also your production on the Mahatma, in and around the Mahatma. You know, choosing Vaishnava Janato, Tene kahi je peeda parai chani re. What a hauntingly melodious song and weaving your story around it. I was completely blown away. I would request all the listeners and viewers to go back if you haven't seen our Gandhi Jayanti special. It's there in the archives. Just scroll and look at Storytellers Cafe, Gandhi Jayanti special with Vikram Sridhar and you can watch it at leisure. Please do watch it and drop in your comments. And our guest for tonight is Vikram Sridhar. He's a fantastic storyteller. Beyond that, I think um, somebody who's very passionate about this oral tradition. And we are in conversation with him. And today is the 3rd of October, and we are talking to Vikram Sridhar about his production in and around the Mahatma. Uh, what kind of inspired you to work on this? And um, also tell us in brief about how the pandemic has treated you. I know it's treated all of us very well. And what, what's your future plan? Okay, so sure. there you go. So I'll start with BSS. I'll, I'll tell briefly because the BSS space belongs to many people. I'm just one of those people who's holding it. And uh, we started in 2013 in Bangalore. And like I said, it's a city where I became a butterfly and I'm flying from there. And uh, same time, many other storytellers were trying, we are trying to find different forms of storytelling. There was business, there was education. And we all thought we need to come together and hold hands. I mean, and that's when Bangalore Storytelling Society bloomed and uh, it's taken multiple forms, multiple ways. Um, and uh, like people have taken wings and flown. And today it's, I'm holding space, tomorrow somebody else will hold, hold space. And uh, like how Usha mentioned, we might come and go, but uh, stories will stay. And what are we doing to storytelling? What are we doing to our cities that we live in? And that for me, has been a constant question. That's what I think I'm contributing uh, in my own capacity to BSS. And uh, uh, and that's where I pause because like I said, it belongs to many people and uh, I'm not, like I can't just speak for, uh, on that. I think uh, it's a large, the entire storytellers of Bangalore own BSS. So that's the uh, capacity of BSS because we've been doing events uh, from 2013 every month, every week. And today, in, even during the pandemic, we've been doing sessions for children, adults. Uh, the space is open for anybody who wants to come and share a story. From there, I moved to um, in and around the Mahatma. Where do I begin? So if you have to ask few people across the country, from Kashmir to Gujarat, to Nagaland, Manipur, and Kerala, and Tamil Nadu, give me five people that you think everybody in India knows. And you will find that one common person would be Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi. You might agree with him, you might disagree with him, or you might not have any opinion on, on him, but 
somewhere in our collective memory, this name is strongly etched. And that connects me, who is in South India, to somebody in Assam, to somebody in Delhi, to somebody in Gujarat. And through Bharat FM, I'm sure it's across the world when you think of India. And as I was growing up, um, like even in the show that I start with, I say how the school I studied in the founder, uh, Mrs. YGP, used to tell her story of when she met the Mahatma Gandhi. She used to be gifted. She was, she was once gifted with a mango. And similarly, so many stories have always been there. And as I grew up, the narratives have changed, opinions have changed. And, and this Vaishnava Janato bhajan has been sung in so many voices. Just like how beautifully Usha sang, there's Lata Mangeshkar, there's Chitra, there's S.P. Bala Subramanian, so many voices to that song. And it always stops with that one stanza or maybe the second stanza. And I didn't even know the language is Gujarati. And I volunteered with organizations which have a, a vision with Gandhi in a certain way. And the Joy of Giving Week also happened and Gandhi Jainti came in a different way. But also slowly as I started exploring, every city in, in India has one street called either Gandhi Nagar or MG Road or the airport is called Mahatma Gandhi Airport or just take a wallet and you open it, you'll see his face. And I've been consumed by these narratives, but my constant question was, can there be just one Mahatma in this country? Because when you look at the definition, why he was given Mahatma, the word by uh, Rabindranath Tagore, or um, uh, they say Pranjeevan Mehta, a doctor, first coined the word. There are many versions of that story. And you look at what makes a Mahatma, and that's when the entire song of Vaishnava Janato, which is very, broadly secular, talks about the qualities of what makes a human being, which is also Mahatma, right? Everybody in this world, once we are born, we have the same gift that Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi had to become a Mahatma. But are we becoming? Are we opening the doors? Are we closing the doors? And through my travel, every time I travel uh, for storytelling, or uh, actually storytelling is what I've been traveling with, I always pause in a couple of spaces. One, I pause in museums because I believe a lot of heritage of a country is boxed in this lovely public space called museum. The second space, some people might not agree, <laughs> is a zoo. Because for me, a lot of time animals in the wild, I don't want to disturb them. Who am I to enter their world? And also I see a lot of public coming into zoos and you, I see a lot of how public react to animals. And that is for me interesting. And also different communities of people, different language people come. And the third is there's always a Gandhi museum or a Gandhi archive or a place that Gandhi touched in that city. And I've always made these three spaces somewhere that I'll keep visiting. Apart from any other spaces, these are constant ones. And um, in Bangalore, especially, if some of you have come to Bangalore, there is a hotel called Lalit Ashok, and that's where the Bangalore Literature Festival happens. And as the festival happens, it happens around a swimming pool, and the children's section is right there. And I discovered that there is this urn and a small memorial right in center of a five-star hotel. And I go near it, and it says, this is where Mohandas Karanchan Gandhi addressed a crowd of 500, 5,000 people so many years back. And today, there's a swimming pool right next to it. And another journey, there is a story of a school called RBANM, Rai Bahadur Arkad Narayan Swami Mudalayar, who started one of the first schools for non, uh, for people who come from linguistic Tamil, Telugu background, who can't afford to go to an English school. He's one of those first founders of that school. He himself was not educated, but he gave education to a lot of people, especially if you look at the place called Halasuru in uh, Bangalore, he sort of owned most of it at one point of time. He also built the high court. And when he built the school, Gandhi had written a letter to him and he had signed it in Tamil. So thanks to Intag, I did a small project with uh, uh, for making his story uh, into a performance. And that time I saw this letter which was lying in their collective uh, archive. And the tree that Gandhi planted was, they showed the tree and said, oh, this is the tree Gandhi planted. 
and again i fast forward i had a chance to go to sevagram which is uh, near varda and when i went there i heard of sevagram but always this memory of shabarmati ashram was very strong and when i went to sevagram i realized that wait this ashram is so much then i go to another i go to delhi and of course you go to rajghat and then you go into bombay you go into madras you go to the hindi prachar sabha and everywhere you go you go to madurai you will find a museum and then everywhere there is so much of archive and then you realize this man cannot be understood in one lifetime but the word mahatma for me was intriguing saying that who made him the mahatma and then you realize that for every person that we know there is a small circumference or there's small world around them that makes them do what they do it could be kasturba gandhi it could be mahadev desai it could be many people who have not been documented and these people mahatma was my journey and that's when i started looking uh, from just his story which we all know born gujarat went to london went to south africa came back to india but who are these people who triggered his move and one of and many people have sponsored his move from one place to another many people have housed him in spaces who are these people and we in today and what is it in 2021 because today's children gandhi is a mythical character because uh, gandhi's last secretary kalyanam expired uh, last year and uh, with people slowly who have met him who are going to move away we are going to look at mohandas karamchand gandhi as a mythical person from now on and what is it for 2021 and that questions along with my journeys uh, internally externally is what i've woven in and the vaishnava janata song the more i went and i've been going to gujarat for the last 10 years every 2 uh, 3 months i've uh, been in baroda been in ahmedabad from there i venture out to other spaces the entire song in gujarati bloomed in a very different way and the performance has a translation and if you're watching this go just see what the song translates to and you could be a follower of whatever faith that song might appeal to you in its essence and that i think in today's time we need a mahatma in each of us or people around us are the mahatmas who make us both our options to choose from and i leave it there and that's the inspiration to create in and around the mahatma because the means the word mahatma because his name is not mahatma gandhi his name is, his name is mohandas karamchand because gandhi is a family name and mahatma is a title do you hold on to titles because it, what does it mean to us and the next question of uh, usha ji about what the pandemic has done um <laughs> i moved into full time storytelling from a corporate work um and some uh, uh, a bal singer one told me parvati bal like parvati bal told me to surrender and when she said that i surrendered to storytelling and i wanted to just travel telling stories here there everywhere and not sit in the front of the laptop but then you have to thank a privilege that uh, the pandemic made me adapt to technology quite fast and uh, the marketer in me the past management degree all that put me into place and said that accept because one of the parts of journeys in life is not to look at the past or complain but to say that this is what has happened what do you do that made me also shift base from bangalore to chennai because uh, many reasons uh, your space also changes and uh, uh, monetary monetarily many things changed but then the journey continues so my journey continued into this because for me today this is such a beautiful space i'm sure each one of you have created the space um for yourself and i created the space and um, i look at this beautifully as saying that my this is my stage this is my space and i adapted i created workshops which uh, uh, are long workshops which are uh, Uh, the art of um, creating folklore and looking at folklore for today, uh, like how Usha mentioned, the the journey I have had with Chilpa Modi be how uh, folk is important in today's time to liberate our voices, and uh, that's when Panchatantra also comes into that. 
and then also creating shorter shorter workshops so that it also is an extension because people have been asking uh, will you teach storytelling i say you can't teach an art but i can share my journey so i've been sharing because i'm not a storyteller i believe i believe I, uh, i'm just uh, traveling on the path of storytelling um kahani kadai in that way and uh, that's what the pandemic has done and and i hope i meet each one of you watching this in your city when i start traveling again and that's the pandemic story so it's been wonderful thanks to uh, uh, the digital world i think uh, uh, that's taken a lot the world has become flatter in one small camera and that's the pandemic story of mine thank you thank you vikram you really very very um Uh, in a very detailed yet yet succinctly put everything you know so uh, that's what i like uh, so that you know we cover more things and here i want to share with uh, you as well as i'm sure you would agree with me with all the viewers uh, that see there is nothing in a storytelling workshop okay that could be my uh, my view the only way that you learn and become a better storyteller is by listening to stories listening observing other storytellers and because all of us have this latent uh, talent in us just waiting to be unfolded so it it will just start i mean everyone loves to tell a fib uh, to you know talk about something in a in a great descriptive style so listen to a lot of storytellers i remember um, when i was uh, uh, newly married i wouldn't say newly married like a few years after my children were born we would have bhagavat sapta at home every year sometimes more than once so all the vidwans and pandits would come and stay because my father was uh, uh, you know he himself would read and he's written also handwritten so i would host it at home and i would see the pandits because we would have the para and a morning they would recite and evening would be the storytelling and sitting and that time it was only you know you had your tape so you know mm. putting on the tape and listening to krishna premi telling the story listening listening and i would say my god he is wonderful this bhagwadar is telling a beautiful story but why is it see the more you listen the more you observe you will miss out certain subtle things so every time you go back your story will be exclusive your story will be again something innovative something different you know and that would be my word of advice is listen to a lot of stories observe storytellers and of course you have the freedom to attend workshops to so uh, coming back to you vikram uh, you know beautifully you, your journey uh, around in and around mahatma and the song uh, wonderful how long did it take you to work on this uh, story and scripting and uh, um so i I'm, i'm a little bit improv so i keep changing from show to show because i think okay. from the last time like how you said listening every time things come in i added to the next show because i think as an artist we are not the same between two shows so uh, i keep doing Absolutely. that so i think about from from the time this has been there and it's the as a show it started about 2 3 years back when um, uh, it was for october 2nd i think in ata galata and uh, from there it's been putting it on actually put it on paper only this year i think for the I think one of the thing with pandemic is definitely to pause like how you said listen and uh, go back to your go back to the roots go back to your text and that's something so yes yes wonderful friends please do go if you've not already watched in and around the mahatma which is a, a storytellers cafes um, gandhi jayanti special uh, we've specially curated this curated by uh, vikram shridhar and uh, i have the proud privilege of showcasing it on storytellers cafe please do it does take a lot of trouble you know it's very easy for me to sit back and say hey it's a long weekend you know i can just take back but um, i diligently put out you know to bring out storytellers because that gives me joy 
that's the joy of giving to all the storytellers because we get to listen and uh, do watch this show and drop in your comments and feel free to reach out to vikram on his social handles which will be there on the page so mark that your calendar 2nd october because since we are pre recording this event 2nd october that is tomorrow is gandhi jayanti please watch in and around the mahatma it's a one hour special on storytellers cafe will be streamed at 9 pm and on 3rd of october sunday do watch the conversations and expressions with vikram to understand how do does one put together a production it's a lot of work and um, in vikram's case he has traveled all the places that he weaves in his story so you will see it for yourself so vikram any last words any thoughts that you would like to share with us um thanks for the space um a space to share space to communicate and uh, being a gandhi jayanti special uh, go back and uh, listen to what he says you might agree disagree but listen like how usha says because a lot of time we don't listen we make judgments uh, based on somebody else's thing and one of the person whose work, life is completely documented is they, they say there were five people who documented his work every day so mohandas karanchand gandhi was just like you and me we made we just call him mahatma but each one of us in our own journey somewhere have a choice there so that's uh, all i want sorry absolutely vikram you know such an extraordinary man who led a very simple life you know he held no office uh, he had no position he had no wealth a private man no property without any official title or office and yet this uh, i would say not puny uh, not very tall a little brown man in loin cloth who led his country to freedom and i think that is amazing about bapu and do watch in and around the mahatma and do drop in your comments we would love to hear from you and follow vikram on his social handles and that's me usha venkatraman saying bye to you sayonara goodbye namaste good night good day good evening do keep watching storytellers cafe thank you vikram thank you nandri 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 yes now I have the job of playing the bharat fm jingle and i would say um, uh, what do we say uh, about gandhi ragupati raghav raja ram patita pavana sita ram yes Namaskar sat sri akal welcome and adab you are listening to bharat fm a one of its kind multilingual eclectic provider of entertainment information and news to indian americans headquartered in cincinnati ohio bharat fm airs shows out of cincinnati chicago and phoenix we take pleasure in our ability to cater to your bhakti chusti sphurti shakti and masti needs with our audio and visual shows Check out bharatfm.com for our online program schedule and archives. I'm sure the content will definitely tickle your senses. Tune in via the 24-hour web streaming on bharatfm.com or via the Bharat FM app. More information can be procured at 5134885070. This is Bharat FM. Bajega Bharat, jhumega Bharat. यह है भारत एफ़एम। बजेगा भारत झूमेगा भारत